Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. Okay, tonight we are going out out west to the mountain time zone with assistant coach for the Arizona State Sun Devils, Lee Pritz. Lee, welcome to the show. Lee was an All-American at Eastern Michigan University, and then you graduated from Clarion. Is that correct? I actually transferred to Clarion my senior year. And then after the year ended, I went back uh, and got my degree at Eastern Michigan. I had nine credits left at Eastern, so I went back. Was Mike Feeney the next All-American after you at Eastern? He was. And then and, and I believe the last Perry one. after that, right? Oh, yeah. No, Perry. Yeah, then Perry was the last one. That's right. But, but Mike Feeney was the next after you, though. That's correct. Oh, my God. And what was you, where were you, 94, 95? 96. 96. Who won your weight? Uh, Sheldon Thomas. That was when Sheldon won the weight. Yeah. Because he was third the next year, wasn't he? Uh, I think so. But he was a big reason why I transferred to Clarion to train with him for, uh, you know, Rob Eider and, and Sheldon Thomas were, were, was who I was going to be training with my senior year. Dude, you've been the like we just talked about it. You've been at four places, four D one places, right? Yeah. Where did the journey start coaching? University of Missouri. So, and again, that's what it, my senior year when I transferred to Clarion, they didn't have my major. So, it was actually a wild story. It, it was coming down. You know, this is pre cell phone, right? So I was I was talking. It was kind of late in the. And I was talking to Claren in Illinois, and, you know, I, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. And Rob Eider called me. He's like, man, you know, we don't have your major, but, you know, we can do this. If you're willing to switch majors, we can do this. But it's going to take you 15 hours of summer school to get eligible since I didn't have my major. And I'm like, whoa, that's heavy, you know. And, uh, and then all of a sudden when it was coming down to crunch time, uh, I was trying to get a hold of Mark Johnson and Johnson was not in the office at the time. Right. You know, he's probably out on the road doing camps, recruiting, you know, doing what you're doing. And so I couldn't get a hold of him. And I was kind of sitting in my, I was sitting in my apartment and what was making it crunch time. If I was going to start Clarion was starting summer school and I couldn't miss summer school. So Clarion's summer school timeline is what made it crunch time. And I really like the idea of Sheldon Thomas and, and Rob Eider, you know, training with Sheldon, training with Rob, Rob being my coach, actually both of them being my coaches. And I'm like, that was a great idea, but I really like the idea of going with Mark Johnson and that big 10 style that, you know, that, that, that he was with. And I was like, man, so I was torn. And all of a sudden it was a Friday school starting Monday. It was a Friday. And I remember waking up and I threw my stuff in a bag. And I was like, Hey, you got to, you know, my girlfriend at I said, you got to take me to Clarion. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I start school Monday. She's like, what? So I, I, Ider didn't even know. I showed up on Ider's doorstep and it was like 5 p.m. I knocked on his door and he's like, what are you doing here? I was like, school starts Monday, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how it went down. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so that started, that was, so I finished that year and I had like 21 credits to graduate from Clarion. And I, so I checked back with Eastern. I only had nine to graduate from there. So Brian Smith was in his first year 
at the University of Missouri. And in a couple of years prior, he said, hey, man, you know, when I get a D1 coaching job, I want you to coach with me. And I said, absolutely. And so right after I got done my senior year, I said, hey, I'm coming. And he's like, no, you got to graduate first. I'm like, don't worry. I'll take classes while I'm there. And he's like, nope. He goes, you graduate first and then come over. And that's what he, so I found the fastest route. And I was going back to Eastern Michigan, taking my nine credits, get my degree. And then I, I moved at December 28th. I drove up to University of Missouri and started coaching at Mizzou. Was that like 98, 99? When was that? I believe that was, yeah, that was 98, 99. So, so is Mark Bader a freshman? Mark Bader's freshman year. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love Mark Bader, dude. I just got to put He's that my out. Guy. I'm a big fan of Mark Bader. I love Mark Bader. Um, you know, I don't work with Flow Sports anymore, but I, there's, there's only ever going to be love for Mark Bader. Um, we, we grew real close in London when Joe Williams and ditched us for this girl. Turns out they're married with two kids now. Yeah. But – you know, because Joe was, was on the team there pitch. too, right? Joe was on the team for a year or two when you were there, wasn't he? Joe was on the team. His brother was on the team. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. I love those that guys. Those guys are my guys, man. I've traveled internationally with those guys. Those guys are just good, salt of the earth, Missouri dudes. Love those guys. Those guys are good guys. So, oh, I love them. They're just awesome guys. Love them. I can't – I wouldn't say boo. I actually just found a – video i'll have to send it to you i'm guessing this one's going to stay underground bader and i wrestling in a hotel at the 2014 yeah 2014 ohio high school state championships hotel nasty disgusting stinking of cigarette burns hotel room in columbus outer outer belt of columbus and bader's in a pair of boxer briefs i'm in shorts and a t-shirt and we we wrestled to the death oh i could see that all day <laughs> I'll send yeah, you the link. I don't know if it's ever going to see. I don't know if it's ever going to see public light, but uh, I was just texting him, and he's like, "Oh, that's so great. That's so great." Oh, yeah. So he was pumped about it. But uh, you know, like your journey's just been such a unique journey. Tell me about, you know, first off, what place did you take in Eastern Michigan in '96? What place did you take? I I took sixth place. Sixth place. Okay. Which we already know it's super hard to be an All American out of the Mid American Conference. Obviously, it was very hard back then because there was more teams, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how many teams there were. I was really oblivious to the process, man. Um, you know, you go in and, and you, like so many guys, you have a vision of being a national champion, right? That's your goal. Your goal, and, and you can't really see past that, and you don't want to see past that, you know. And uh, I always knew that, you know. And I don't know where I learned this, this concept, but it was always front size for yourself, the back size for your team, you know, and maybe that was what gives you a little extra to, to give you a purpose to, you know, that's, that's bigger than yourself at that moment when you need it. Right. Because your, your goal and your dream's gone. So now you need, maybe you need something to, to push you by. And so I don't know where I learned that, but that stuck with me forever. I still use it. Uh, but I, I do, I remember losing, second round and I wasn't I wasn't one to look at brackets a whole lot but I took a quick peek and saw there was a lot of lines I had to go through to take third <laughs> and I was like it was too much you know it was too much to look at it too big of a mountain to climb all at one so I just focused on the next match you know and then the next match and and that's just and I remember, I didn't even understand when I came back Friday evening, you know, that All-American round, and I see the match change. You know, they had that dog bone, and I didn't really understand it. I was like, all right, tournament's getting smaller, you know. And I won that match, and uh, our assistant coach at the time, he grabbed me, and he's picking me up, and I'm like, put me down, man. I got to wrestle in like 45 minutes. What's, you know, what are you doing? You know, because I really didn't understand – you know, that at that point that I just accomplished something, I, I didn't know. I knew I was wrestling again in 45 minutes to an hour. And so he was just like, man, you, you did it. I'm like, I, I, I got a match in 45. I got to go. And I went cool down and, you know, just kind of went through my process. And, you know, so that's, yeah, it was kind of, it, it was, it was kind of a unique experience because I was clueless as to really how it worked. Who'd you beat in the blood round? 
Uh, Jason Betts from Penn State. So he was I – know, I know in Pennsylvania uh, he was a good – I think he won three, three titles in PA. And the reason I know that, and I think he got beat his senior year, but the reason I know that is one of my teammates uh, – I was cutting weight at the hotel and he came over to the hotel, you know, and it was, it was, uh, or no, I wasn't cutting weight. It was in between rounds. And I was back at the hotel, get something to eat or whatever. And he came back to the hotel. And he's like, and he walked in the room and said, man, that was a great run. He goes, you know, it's over now, but that was a great run. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm getting ready to wrestle. And he's a PA guy. Right. And yeah. He's like, oh yeah. They, they're thick as thieves, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh no, nah, man, you got bets. It's over. It's so, and again, I didn't know anybody, so I'm like, Bets, Bets got me, you know, and I didn't know he's a, you know, he's a stud, you know. I love it. Hey, where did you do your high school wrestling? In South Florida, uh, down at Western High School. How far from so, Miami? Uh, thirty minutes, thirty minutes north. It's not exactly wrestling country. It's it's becoming more and more wrestling com- country, but like. The people off the top of my head, I know Grahalas, I know Bono, I know Mike Schick, I know Lee Pritz. I don't know a whole lot of other Florida All-Americans. There are. I think Lembrick, is Lembrick the Florida All-American? I think he was. Lembrick, yeah. Yeah, Lembrick so, is. Um, you know, this is just off the top of my head, not even, you know, really thinking about it. But, like, Florida isn't the powerhouse that it's not PA. You're taking not, PA nine out of ten times in that blood round match. You know, like, what you're – sure. What, what your teammate was saying to you probably wasn't the wrong thinking for everybody else. It's just not what you say to your teammate going into the blood round though. Oh, it was awesome. I appreciate it. Cause I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> Show him a little something, you know, but you know, what, what was your score? Uh, three to two. Three to two. Writing time, escape point. Please say I switched them. Point. I switched, switched them. Them. Yeah. So, and it was funny. I'll tell you because he was riding me like a show pony. And, uh, and <laughs> I'm, Zeb, I, it was a trip, dude. I was a trip, man. Cause again, I looked at it different. I, I, I started wrestling in ninth grade, you know, so I didn't have this crazy amount of experience. Right. Oh my so, God. You started wrestling in ninth grade and by your eighth, seventh year of wrestling, your sixth year of wrestling, you're an all American. Yeah, six or seventh. Yeah. That's amazing. And, well, I appreciate it. That's like that it, Minnesota you know. kid. That Minnesota kid from, from California. Sparks. Oh, yeah. Sparks yeah. is like, he's new like that. He's just like you were. Right. And he's yeah, a horse, dude. Too. Sparks a is a horse. freaking horse. We recruited wow, him, too. you started in ninth grade? Well, well, here's what was funny. I'm wrestling oh, bets, and I remember he goes down. I forget what, how this went. I think it was second period. He goes down. It's all, you know, and I remember his back – was this wide you know he had a ball beat up he was a monster right and i remember i was kind of bouncing behind him i turned back and i looked at willie gatson and i was like this dude's huge (laughs) (laughs) you you just you just wrestle you know and 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 again i had fun with it you know so i was always like it was you know it was intense but it was like i loved i was like this dude's huge and then i remember him riding me and and the and, and again I might have a it might have been the second period other but that third period I was down and I re, I think I was down he was riding me and we had this drill in high school stand up switch roll all we did in high school on bottom stand up switch roll stand up switch roll you know we do it over and over and over and chain and wrestling a, like a chain wrestling yeah. drill yeah and, and they didn't teach us anything but three things stand up switch roll you know and if you were lucky they let you do it on both sides. And, and uh, Smith ended up, Brian Smith was my high school coach my junior and senior year. So, so that's the connection. Having, you and Brian Smith, he yeah. was your high school coach. Yes. How did you do? What was your best finish for him? Uh, actually, both years he coached me. He was my, ninth, my junior and senior year. So both years he coached me, I won state titles. Okay. So you're two-time Florida State champ? Correct. Okay. So and Brian Smith was your coach? Yes. Okay, that's and, kind of important. That's like to, when you're telling your story, that's actually really super important to know that because was he a high school teacher and, and a, a coach? For two years. For two years, okay. And he went to Michigan State, didn't he? If I'm he correct did. me if I'm wrong. Okay. He did. 
And his, his high school coach, Randy Miller, was my high school coach my ninth and 10th grade year. Got it. So, it, 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 yeah, it's a whole triangle, right? It's awesome. And I love it. So I, I remember Smith in the tunnel, and he came out of the tunnel just a little bit because I was on that corner mat, you know, and he came out of the tunnel a little bit, and I saw him, you know, stand up, switch, roll. You know, he just kind of, you know, he didn't say, but he, he gave me the signals, you know, that I knew. Yeah. And so I just started hitting stand up, switch, roll, stand up, switch, roll. And like the second or third time, fourth time through, I ended up getting a switch and, you know, getting the reversal. And, and that was basically the difference. So he got two escapes. You got one escape and a reversal. Uh, I, uh, he, I think he might have taken me down. Maybe, maybe it was four to three. It was okay. a one-point match, and it was – it was got it. I just know I got a switch. And the that switch was a is what won it. Yes. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Old high school drill, stand-up switch roll. That I haven't Old done in three years. Scene wrestling, that's what you did. That's what you won with. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And then you, hey, and then after you're an All American, you won again. Mm -hmm. Who'd you wrestle again? Uh, NC State kid. Uh, I uh, I won that in the last twenty seconds. You know, with the sweep. You know, and I forget who I, I forget his name. Uh, he, I mean, obviously he was tough too. And uh, yeah, that was it was a fun weight class. I mean, Lindsey Durlacher was in it and. You know, uh, uh, Morgan was in it. Uh, David Morgan, monster. Monster. Did you he hit him in the Concy semis? No, I hit him in the second round. Is that who and, put you in the? Oh yeah, and okay. but I credit him. I credit him for. I feel really good with getting out of crabs and leg deep in leg defense now. And all credit goes to him. And he, you know, I've told him before. And his brother, his brother actually, how about this? His brother, his older brother went down and coached my high school, coached my high school for several years. That's wild. It's a huge That's triangle, wild. like you're saying. It's all like everybody's yeah. interconnected. Wrestling's like that, though. You know that, right? It is. Everybody, it is, it's but... who you know, right? And uh, okay. who'd you hit in the Conti semis? Do you remember? Uh, Durlocker. Durlocker. Yeah, and okay. that, I, that was a that was a good mat. He was so good at controlling mat space. Um, but I remember I ended up losing like minute seven riding time. Wow! And again, I didn't I, I didn't have you know I, I I got I got two takedowns in the third, right? But again, he's this dude savvy. He knew he knew he had that you know he knew he had that seven seconds, you know and. On the second takedown, I cut him right away, but I probably should have tried to break the riding time before, you know, cutting him. Obviously, I should have, right? <laughs> but, you know, again. Dude, 25 years going. ago, come on. <laughs> come yeah, on. I, again, on. I was just going. Yeah, right? you're just wrestling. So, uh, so you hit him in the uh, Conti semis, uh, yeah. Dur uh, Lindsey Durlocker, and then he passed away recently, didn't he? Uh, yeah, right. it's probably – Five years ago, seven years ago. I think like it's longer, man. I think it's closer to ten now, but it seems like yesterday. Ten years. Yeah, man. Oh my god, I didn't. I, I didn't mean recently, like in the last year or two. Yeah. I thought it was like five, seven years ago. Right. It oh might. It might goodness. be seven to ten. Yeah. Wow. It was, yeah. Time just Terrible. travels so fast. Uh, who'd you hit for fifth and sixth? Mike Mena. You hit Mena for fifth and sixth, dude. Yeah. But your weight was loaded. Yeah. Was so, Teague in the weight? Was Teague in the weight? Teague was. Teague was in the weight that year. Did he place? He didn't place that year. Wow. Dude, you were in a loaded weight. Loaded. And and uh, Mena, I, I took Mena down first, and I'm feeling myself. You know, I'm like, oh, I got him. You know, and and he took injury time right away. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm in his head. I got – and all of a sudden – it. it, it I don't know how far into the second period, but not that far into it. You know, I'm up three to one. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're rolling. And I, I think, and again, this is prior to a whole bunch of video being out. And I had a few people tell, hey, watch his move, watch his move. But no one actually showed me his move. They're like, watch his move. I'm like, okay, what's his, you know, they're like, the ventriloquist. Well, again, I knew about six moves at the time, you know, and so I'm like, the ventriloquist. And sure enough, 
I dive in on a shot and he hits me with the ventriloquist and I was like this like, roll roll oh, yeah. right it's like you go oh, one yeah. way and you come back the other right yeah, yeah it's, it's a cement that. job you know, it's a cement it's, job right it's like yeah, a gain and roll job. cement job type deal yeah yeah depending and, uh, no but <laughs> I was on I was I was on my back for a, like a minute 10 it was something like a minute 10 oh my god right and I was you know what kept me from getting pinned is I didn't want the there was so many I it was at uh, where was it at? It was, they, I don't know, but it was full. Of, it was full of Iowa fans, and they were going bonkers. And I was like, "There's no way I'm gonna let them party on me. I can't let them party on me." <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna have to detach my head from my body. Yeah, that's what which, I was. Saying. Which he would do. He would do that. Too. He would and do that. <laughs> I got up, and I remember blood was like coming down my face. And to, my coach came over. He's, you know, he's he called me on. I went over. And I was like, "What?" And he said, "Where are you bleeding from?" I said, ah, "I'm not bleeding. I popped an eye, a blood vessel in my eye." <laughs> bleeding from your eyeball. Hey, Pritz, you're, you got it. You got to take some blood. T- you're bleeding from your eyeball. I just got to point this out. You're bleeding. Your eyeball is bleeding. Yes, yes. You just don't see so that one often. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> but have you and, seen it since? Have you seen the eyeball pop? bleed sense anywhere practice match anywhere have you seen it uh, i don't think so but <laughs> it happened to you over fifth and six <laughs> yeah i'm and sorry to laugh at that dude we both are. i did too oh did god too. but it was funny man. i mean and so that you know and in, in, in third period was kind of not much action i was going after trying to catch up but by this time i'm down by three or something four and you know dive in on a shot or something, try to score at the end, get scored on. But, yeah, it was a fun match. And it, and men is always fun. You know, I've, I've worked several camps with him over the years, and he's a great friend and awesome dude. And so, yeah, it was it was, it was was cool, man. Dude, that's funny. So, the next – so, that was – was that your sophomore or junior year? That was my – that was technically – that was my – I had two years of junior college at Garden City, then Eastern Michigan for two years, then my – so, that was my third year of college. Dude, so I guess my red shirt went to Garden City, Kansas. I did. <laughs> oh my God, dude! What are they, the Bronx, the Rider, the Cement Rider? Or oh, they got some weird name? What is it? The Bronx, the Bronx Bronc Busters. Oh yeah. What's a Bronx Buster? Dude, it was <laughs> it was the most unique experience. But, hey, <laughs> but, my best friends are still there, are still from there. <laughs> they don't have it's wrestling little, anymore, they, do they? They don't. They, don't they actually, wrestling. they dropped my, they dropped my last year. So that's why you, you, you were you going to do three years there? No way. I, I mean, my whole goal there was, you know, go move there. On. Move on. <laughs> register a year, wrestle here. And, and I, even then, when I, I remember when Smith called me, because he, he was at Cornell already. You know, I took a year off before I went to the fire academy. And, like, and I wasn't going to wrestle in college, but I was going crazy without it, you know. And uh, I just – that's all I wanted to do. And so I called him up, and he was at Cornell at the time with Jack Spates. And he, he – I called him up and said, hey, I want to wrestle. I got to wrestle. And he called me back a week later and said, yeah, you're, you're going to Garden City. So – You're going to Garden City. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know. So I just, I, I literally started searching around, trying to figure out where it was. Again, this, there's no internet. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, there was, but not really, not like it is. It's not widespread. Know? People weren't using it and, like they use it now. So I called them up and, and or hammer. So I, and I said, man, coach, I can't, I can't find a junior college in, in Jersey. I just assumed it was the Garden State, Garden City, you know? <laughs> He said, no, nah, man, you're, you're going to Kansas. I said, coach, I'm not going to Kansas. And he's like, yes, you are. It's like, all right. So then I got the coach's number and called him up. I said, Mark Lean, I'm, you don't know me, but I'm Lee Pritz and won a couple state titles down here in Florida, and I'm coming to Garden City. <laughs> Wait, he said, all right, let's Lee, go. Mark Lean, who, that's not Jordan. Jordan. Jordan's dad. Yes. Because he was the Chattanooga coach. Yes, he was at Garden City before that. Dude, I got to tell you a story about when I wrestled against Chattanooga. I'll send you the video. I wrestled this dude from Chattanooga who murdered all these prostitutes. And they were like 
pregnant. He murdered no like four people. David Tyner was this guy's name. And Lean oh was his God. coach, I believe. Listen, I, I know Lean didn't teach the guy to murder people. I get that, right? <laughs> I understand no. that. Not what I'm saying here. But well, that guy was at uh, – Chattanooga, and I believe Lean was the coach because I wrestled the dude in like 99, 2000, 2001 type. type. Yeah. Was Lean there then? He was there then, wasn't he, in Chattanooga? He had, yeah, he was. He had to be. Yeah. So, I mean, had the dude was really good, though. The guy won the Southern yeah. Conference and qualified for NCAAs, but I wrestled him, and the match almost turned into a fist fight a bunch of times. Yeah, the dude's gang name was like Hooligan. <laughs> dude, the dude was a bad dude, man. He was just like this mean looking dude. And then you should That's see like crazy. the mug shots. You know, he just his neck's massive. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I wrestled that dude. But Lean was the coach at uh at uh, Chattanooga when that guy was on the team. Yeah, I definitely I, I, I know Lean didn't teach him those behaviors. I get that. Oh, but, I know. But what was it like when you got the Garden City? Was Jordan like a little redheaded dude running around? He was. He was. He was like seven, eight years old, you know, just running around the room and, you know, you know, he was always around, you know, he was always around, but it was, it was, I went from South Florida, you know, to Garden City, Kansas. It was, to say the least, a culture shock. Yeah. And then, you know? and then listen, Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti is like the stepchild of Ann Arbor. <laughs> they touch. Yeah. But it's yeah. a different world than Ann Arbor. It's not the same. It literally is location wise. But when you get into Ipsy, it's a different feel than Ann Arbor. It's totally different. So I'm on a recruiting trip. Uh, and and Ramiko Blackman was there with me at the time. You know, uh, you know, Matt Turner. We had a whole bunch of cool cat cats, you know, but I figured you'd know Ramiko off the top of your brain. But yeah. Yeah. So, um, Great. I mean, all those guys, I'm so close with those guys till this day, that team, you know, and, but on my recruiting trip, uh, they, we were going across the tracks to somebody's apartment to get some people and head out somewhere. Right. And I, uh, I'm standing outside on, they have these stairs, like five, six stairs that lead up and there's, you know, concrete, you know, and there's a door and on each side of the door, there's, I don't know, three, four foot of glass. Well, I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, <laughs> here comes someone diving out the window. Oh, tuck and roll, right? And glass is shattering. And, you know, I grew up in South Florida. I, I knew enough to know that, man, it's time to go. So I just turned and bounced. When I see him rolling, I'm like, time to go head left and just run so i just bounced <laughs> who was it who was it a guy was chasing about the house with the gun Gu gun and you went yeah. there and you went there oh i loved it i was like coach i'm coming this place is nuts <laughs> no, but, but but it wasn't but it was just the teammates in the place the reason i liked it is that the team was so good it, it could have been anything. I was going there because of Willie Gatson, right? Willie Gatson was my guy, and I didn't care really what the environment was or who was around it or, you know, the only thing I, I couldn't get back. Willie Gatson, I knew him when I was in high school, and I knew what he was about, and he believed in me and trusted me, and, and I did the same to him. And so, you know, he could have told me we were going to Antarctica, and I would have went there and told him it was beautiful, you know. So that's really – it's wild that those there. two guys recruited you. And it, once again, it goes back into how this is a triangle and we're all interconnected, right? So Kyvin would have been like a little boy. Five years old. Yeah. Jordan Lean would have been a little boy. Yep. And you wrestled for both of their dads at two different college programs. That That is wild, my friend. So it's like when you see oh, yeah. those guys and you probably give them a big, you know, big hug. Big hugs. It's probably yeah. like – I've known these dudes since they were snot nosed. Oh yeah. Literally. You knew the dudes when they were snot nosed. You knew them when they were like yeah. little boys. Hey dad, I gotta go to the bathroom. You know, like oh, the stuff that. I'm dealing with with my kids. Hey dad, I need you to wash this, that, or the other. Hey dad, come and yeah, wipe, yeah. you know. You know, I mean it was probably like you get my point. Like it's that's special, yeah. man, to know people like that when they're little like that. It's awesome. I love it. Oh, well, my nephew, 
my nephew used to wrestle Kyvan's older brother, Jared, when they were like five or six years old, you know, because coach Gatson was down in Florida coaching in high school for a couple of years. And so, wow. So that's a little man, my nephew, who's like a son to me, you know, he's 10 years younger than me, but I was like, you know, he was everywhere I was, you know, so he used to wrestle and he, he was pretty salty as a, as a little joker. And so coach Gatson used to always come up to me like, man, boo, that kid's going to be good. You know, boo, that kid's going to be good. You know, and that's how he keeps talking. I was like, and he's like, man, Jared's pretty good, but he, he'd be whipping his ass. He'd give out them ass whippings for free. That's what you'd say. <laughs> Who's your nephew? Uh, his name's, his name's Victor DeBonzo. He actually, he actually, God, and I can go story after stories on these, but he wrestled when he was little, about eight years old. He st- from like four to eight, he was a monster. Yeah. And then he was like, and I, you know, obviously I would fried him out as fast as I possibly could. <laughs> not, yeah. not thinking anything different, just man, if you're going three hours a day right now, you're going to be, a ha- you know, again, you're going to be a hammer. Wrestling. Yeah. I was wrestling for, uh, you know, I had two years to wrestling under me and, you know, he already had a year under him, you know, we were going, you know, it's crazy. So, and you're, you're 10 years apart and he's a little kid. You're a high schooler, right? Right. So I was just figuring I'm going to bring him right now. And, you know, I fell in love with the sports. So I was like, I'm going to bring this dude right along with me. And he's going to just, he's going to be a monster. And, you know, sure enough, eight years old, he's done. And by the time he gets to high school, you know, he loves football, loves basketball. But he, at the time, he wasn't huge. You know, he's still tiny. And uh, he goes to St. Thomas Aquinas High School, which is legendary for their They're sports. They're really good, really good at football. Is that in Lakeland? No, down in Fort Lauderdale. Down in, in Fort Lauderdale, you know, okay. Yes, down in Fort Lauderdale, but their their sports are legendary. Yeah. You know, um, you know Michael Urban and all those guys came out of there. You know, wow. like all those legends. Yeah, they have so many pro players that came out of there. Just legendary sports, and yeah. So, the the AD, uh, George Smith, who was awesome too, and he's actually his son in law, is uh, Roger Chandler from Michigan State. Really. Yeah. So deep. It's all so deep, man. It's so deep. It's so, so deep. It's like the mob. You can't, you want to get out yeah, of it, but you just can't. You can't. If you went to the and witness uh, relocation program, you wouldn't stand a chance. No chance. You'd stand no I, chance. I well, the day, the day and age of the smartphone, I don't think anybody stands a chance. But yeah, dude, there's video. So here's what happened. His his freshman year, he want he's gonna play basketball and football, and or I guess football season and basketball season and two weeks in they cut him from basketball because they want him to wrestle you know George and George Smith told me that he's like he's 112 pounds he needs to wrestle and I'm like yeah but he really wants to play he goes he needs to wrestle I said okay so my nephew like passed the ball behind his back and went for a layup and they coach you do that again you're done and he said okay so a week later he does it not thinking and you're out of here so my nephew calls me distraught you know I'm in junior college now Oh, they cut me from the basketball team. I'm like, oh, it looks like you got to wrestle, you know. And so he ends up wrestling. Oh, he, so he came back. He came back. So he wrestles ninth, tenth, eleventh, and he does all right. I think he qualifies for you know. But they're playing football. You know, they're in the state finals every year from his freshman year through his senior year. So they're not getting done till late. And you know, by this time, his senior year, and he's never played or anything before. But his senior year, he's getting ready to go to University of Pennsylvania play football he's going to UPenn and you know he's like coach or he called me it's unk I don't want to wrestle but you know I just want to lift I said dude just do that and we used to run camps at St. Thomas at the time and he's like hey if these are going to mess up your camps I'll wrestle I said I don't care if they if it mess up our camps they we don't belong there anyway I said just you got to do you and then like two days later he called me and he's like I'm so sore I'm like lifting hard he's like no man I'm wrestling he goes, we got five weeks. He goes, I got to win a title. And I went, all right. So I guess he finishes, he finished second at the county, second at district, second at region. And it was funny because the first week at county finals, they're banging him for stalling. He's laying like Spider-Man on his belly, right? And I guess he told the ref, they banged him again. You got to do something. He goes, you can keep hitting me. It doesn't matter. I can't move. He was exhausted. You know? Yeah, yeah. So he ends up, though, and ends up his senior year 
beating the undefeated kid in the semis and making the state finals in wrestling. So it was pretty. Oh cool. way. Yeah. He came yeah. back around and made the state finals. It did. It was pretty cool. That is incredible. Hey, Ray Lewis wrestled in Florida, didn't he? He did. He was he a state did. champ, wasn't he? I believe he was. I think maybe a two timer. That's unbelievable. Like eighty nine, I believe one eighty nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude's a freak. Freak. Freak, gifted, mutant, and actually, and a legendary work ethic as well. There was a couple. Uh, another one. God, was Eric, uh, uh, heavyweight state champ. I, mean, I know he played at the University of Florida. He was a legend football player at University of Florida, and then went to the pros too. I can't, I can't think of it right so now. So your 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 nephew made the state finals, uh huh, and and got cut from the basketball team. Yes. That's incredible, dude. That that's a good story. What's he do now? He runs his own business. He has a RSP Nutrition. Yeah. So he's very successful. He's all over the world. You know, he's, he's it's it, his products are all over the world. So I love he, it. And he, he, you know, he came out of Penn. He wasn't doing anything. You know, and he just thought somebody was going to give him a job making six figures. And wait, where did he go? You you Penn. He's a genius, too. Yeah. <laughs> he went to Penn? Yeah. <laughs> you, left, you left out he was a genius. Come on, dude. Yeah, no, he played. <laughs> that, that doesn't really – the story needs that, too. Come on. He played football at Penn. <laughs> Come on, <Yeah>. Lee. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> he played football at Penn. And then, he got a, a degree from Wharton? No, he, he ended up not he, – he was going to try to get in there, and then he decided not to. And, um, you know, he, he enjoyed his time there. But then afterwards, he really – He know, got he, a degree. He graduated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did. But he he, he, <laughs> he, he wasn't doing anything. <laughs> Come on, man. Right? The guy's a Ivy Leaguer. Come on. Big time. I love but, it. So is he back in Florida? Dude, is he in Florida? He is. He's in Florida. Smart. He's so smart, he's, dude. Dude, six, you told me hold what on. you were doing tonight with the pool. Uh, <laughs> Zeb. Uh, hold on, Zeb. Six uh, months after graduation, he was sitting on his mom's couch still. And I said, dude, go get a job at McDonald's. I go, at least, you know, you'll be able to make – I said, you got an Ivy League degree. You can be a manager in no time, <laughs> you know, and kind of, you know, bust his say jobs something. You would say something like that. Yeah, because I was, he wasn't doing anything. Yeah. And so he went into like banking or something and like for like another six months and he was ready to shoot himself every day, you know? And yeah. finally he just decided he was quitting everything and started this business. And man, you know, he, and, and now it's a multi million dollar business. He's killing it. Sometimes you get a bet on yourself, Lee Pritz. Yeah. I was so happy for him, man. He's killing it. Okay. So you're at the JUCO. Well, first off, what was your best finish in the JUCOs? Did you qualify for the Nationals? How did you do in JUCO? No. Oh, so my first year, I said I was redshirting. You know, I, I came in and told God, I'm redshirting this year, wrestling. Like, I had a whole plan, even though I knew I, this is what I was told I was going to do. So I went in kind of not understanding how this works. Just, hey, I'm going to redshirt this year, wrestle next year. And not to mention, there was like 11, 18-pounders when I got there. And I was like – 10th or 11th I was somewhere in that rank and uh you know by by December January um top two or three you know and so I'm getting better every day and you know I remember winning a wrestle off you know it's right at the end before regionals and and one pretty big and I remember you know Lean's like all right you, you got to wrestle and I was like coach I'm not coming out of red shirt for you know two matches at region four at, at the national. I said, six matches, I'm not going to do it. I said, and sure enough, uh, and, and we didn't need, the guy we had ended up, I think, second. First, he might have won at first. I, he was second. He was second at, at the junior coaches. So then the next year, I ended up uh, not making the team. Our 26-pounder dropped down to 18, and uh, – yeah, so I didn't I didn't make the team. Uh had a wrestle off right at the beginning of the year. And it was tight. It was like a you know, two point match, you know, one of those seven five or nine seven, one of those matches. And uh that was really the only wrestle off I got, but 
every now and then lean would call me up like, Hey, he can't make weight. You know, it'd be like 10 o'clock on, on Thursday night. He can't make weight for tomorrow's match. I'd be like 12 over, you know, and all of a sudden, Oh, I'm in, I'm in, you know, just starving to get time and yeah. wrestling you where I could. And, uh, yeah. And so sure enough, uh, yeah, I didn't make the team, but that team did really good back. That team won back to back national titles. So, they're, you know, we had a really, really good team and yeah. And then, uh, yeah, from there, I, I left and went to Eastern. Dude, you were never a starter on your JUCO team. No. <laughs> you got it, dude. Your story, your story is the most bizarre, not path traveled story I think I've ever heard. Like it is not, it is the least traveled path I think I've ever heard of. Yes, it's it, it wasn't it wasn't a normal path for sure. So how how does how does Eastern Michigan he recruited you because he knew you from high school, right? Willie knew you from high school, yep. yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's uh I forget who he was talking to, but I was talk I was with him at the at the I was standing with him at junior at JUCO Nationals because I was there every year with the team. Um and I remember standing there with him and uh God, who was he telling? And I, I know he's an Arizona State grad. I can't think of who he was telling at the, right off the top of my head, but he was standing there talking to him, and he goes, hey, and this where, regardless of what, where I, it was an Ipsland or whatever, I was going with him. I remember him telling the guy, because the guy was like, who, who are you here looking at? He goes, I already got my guy. He goes, he's not wrestling the tournament, but he's the best guy here. And I was like, oh, yeah, he got me. <laughs> Here's guy. I know. Yeah, Here's I was guy. his guy, and so I was in. I was like, "Man, this dude believes in me," and and that's you know, and and I knew that was long before I ever went on a recruiting trip with him and everything. And I knew I was going with him. Well, dude, think about it though. The things that you're supposed to get out of college wrestling, you got out of college wrestling. Sure, you did yeah. the weird transfer thing to Clarion, and maybe you didn't make your meet your goals there, right? But you right. went to you went to Ypsilanti. You went to Eastern Michigan, you yeah. were an All American, and you got a degree. And you probably, yeah. if I know Lee Pritz, and I think I know, probably had a good time too. It, I had a great time, you know. But here's 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 a cool thing. See, after my after my so in the middle of my junior year, so right after that that year that I placed in the middle of my junior, year, and we won the conference title that year in '96. We won the the MAC conference. Did you win the MAC? Yeah, we had six in the finals, five champs. Okay. And, uh, you know, I, and I remember the next year, it was like after the second weekend of, of mid-November, Gatson comes in and says he's, he's – his wife and kids were back in Iowa because his wife was getting her doctorate. And, and coach came in and told, set the team down and goes, hey, I, I, I got to leave. I'm going back to Iowa. And, you know, like devastated, right? I was devastated. And the team was devastated. And sure enough, it just didn't go well. You know, that, that, that next year we returned the entire team, the same team minus Ramiko Blackman, and we won a total of five matches at the conference that year. Wow. And I had to pick – I won three. We had two other guys win one, and we had the same team. Wow. And you won the conference the year before. Yes. That is incredible. So, so, you know, the coaching, everything was just, the dynamic just fell apart. Right. Well, yeah. And, and so that's why I was like, I can't stay here. I have to go. Who took over? Was it Charlie Jones then? It was. So Charlie Jones is a, is a real weird, curious case because he won the NCAs, the weight below Kevin Randleman. They both went to Sandusky High, but he was like way older than Kevin Randleman because he, he was he a post grad. He or he was a guy that he did he did military, and then he came back as like a grown man. Dude, did you ever see how massive he was at one sixty seven? Dude, he was twenty eight years old when he won the title. Yeah, he was like twenty eight when he won the title because Randleman and him both went to Sandusky High. But he was like a 1983 grad. Where Adam was our, like an 89 grad. Where our, where our manager at Eastern, Nikki Wilson, 
She's from Sandusky, and her dad coached at Sandusky. No way. Yes. It's all, it's all intermingled, <laughs> man, because that's the area I'm from. Like, I'm covering the Sandusky Bay Conference meet on Saturday. Right. The conference I wrestled in, it's a conference Ian, my nephew Ian, my nephew, all my nephews wrestled in, and my brothers, we all wrestled in that conference. So that's, you know wow, what I mean? Like right. that, that, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Like, just, once again, all intermingled, Lee Pritz. So you left to go your senior year. It was between Illinois and Clarion. How did you do at Clarion when you finally pulled the trigger? You went. Did you go to 26? Were you at 18? Where were you? No, I stayed at 18. Um, it was it was awesome. Ken Ellis was a head coach. Great dude. Um, but the, Jack Davis was no longer coaching there. Okay. Right. But Jack Davis, uh, is, you know, great coach and a mastermind recruiter, you know? And so, and I knew I was going to coach. I spent a lot of time with Jack in my 14 months around Clay. I was there, you know, through the summer. So I was there around 14 months and I spent a lot of time with Jack. I used to go water skiing with Jack and stuff like that and picking his brain and actually working out with his kids and stuff. But his kid was a stud. Jack's kid was a stud, stud baseball player. That's right. He has two. He had he had two sons that were both great athletes. You know, I think the one was a state champ in wrestling and then like a pro baseball. Yeah. Player. Yes, I, I I believe. Yeah, at least in the minors, some. Yeah, yeah. they were good. The pro. And they were, <laughs> you get paid to do it. <laughs> and the outstanding. I mean, like they were all great at water sports. I think Jack and his wife Jackie both. Uh, performed in the you know in the, down in florida at the uh you know at all the water show water ski shows okay in orlando so i mean we used to go out there and just so being around him and and bob bub was there right bob bub you know and you just spend you spend every 10 minutes you spend with him you, you become a better person you know he was that kind of guy and i probably needed it at the time when i was still young and thinking, you know, fighting was the way, right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. but hey, this is how you do things, you know, take your hat off in the building. You know, he was that guy and, you know, and I was a little wilder. And, and so meeting a guy like that and, and helped tame me a little bit too. And so it was good. I mean, just in the technique, man, then you get in the room and you have Mark Angle and, you know, and my boy Jason Money transferred with me, my best friend in the world. He, tra- he two-time junior college champ and high school national champ and you know so he ended up going to clear we both went to clarion together and you know that was really cool and tom told was on that team and i didn't go there were so many good guys on there but just the guys that i was working out with mark angle and then working out on a daily with sheldon thomas and rob eider was the, the amount of technique that was coming my way was mind-blowing yeah you know and, and here's something Zed, that I used to wrestle at the time. I, I prided myself on wrestling hard, you know, and, and that's great for folks though, but it's not going to take you far. Right. I was like, man, wrestling hard, wrestle hard. And so it was, I was really kind of proud, more proud than being all American. I was like, everybody I wrestled took entry time against me, which was good. I was like, okay, that means my pace is high. This is good. They, you know, it's going to break through sooner or later. I'm going to break through. Well, my senior year, nobody was taking injury time because I was learning so much technique. I was trying to be technical, but and, and it was great. So it was probably the best thing that's ever happened for me for my coaching career because it showed me a whole another side of wrestling, you know. And man, so it was just it, it, as far as ha- I had four coaches, yeah, four coaches in five years, and it, knowing that I wanted to be a coach, I was studying all of them. And man, it was, it was, I couldn't ask for a better situation for the career path I was going than what I went through in college. They prepped you. Like what you're saying is you learned from the best coaches. I mean, dude, when you just mentioned the four people that you brought up, that's incredible. The people that you dealt with. And then, yeah. you know, obviously Charlie Jones is a different, he's a different beast compared to all those other guys. Right. Cause I remember he was the coach at Eastern when I was at Kent state, you know, and, and, you know, like I was a national champ, he, but he was just, the guy was a freak. You know what I mean? He was a freak. He won at 28 years old. So I don't know if his imparting is the same of uh, imparting as Bob Bub or Rob Biter, right. Or Brian Smith. 
<laughs> or oh, yeah. Coach Lean, right? Or Willie Gadsden, right? It's just it's totally different. So you 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 were just man, you were all over the place. That's crazy. It's so, unbelievable. So it's and, and then in the summers, and then you got to remember in the summers, I'm spending all summer, every summer after my freshman year with the Granby School of Wrestling with old man Martin and Steve Martin and Wayne Martin, you know, and, you know, there were so many guys, there were so many guys in there, like, that were, that were great time, like Mark Strickland, Carl Perry, you know, and, yeah. you know, I can go on, Brian Stith was around all the time then, and Bubba Jenkins was around all the time, and even though he's high school, you know, just phenomenal, Staylers, Fishcorns, you know, all these guys were around and young, but just, unbelievable nate parker's you know just unbelievable what was that connection there by the way how did you and martin did you you're just because you're a wrestling fanatic you're yeah. a nut you love it i mean you love you know what's you know what's the connection with pack what's the connection with uh with uh you know martin at, at odu what are these connections we get the connection between you and brian smith right what's yeah. the connection with martin so Mark Strickland on the first night at JUCO, we get to the dorm. His dad's there dropping him off. My dad's there, and we're right across the hall from each other. And, you know, we went and hung out that first night. We got there, and we became, you know, incredibly close from that day on. And sometime in the fall, he said, hey, my coaches – and we're so dumb, you know, we don't know. My coaches are in Kansas City doing a camp, you know, for the weekend. You want to go over there? We're like, yeah, we're figuring, hey, we're in Kansas. It can't, five it hours, can't be that far. Five hours, eight, seven hours? Eight, seven, eight hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so, so Strickland went to Great Bridge. Is that, is that the – Went to Great Bridge. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we drove over and, and did a three-day camp over there somewhere in Kansas City. And at the end of the camp, uh, old man Martin came over and said, hey, you ought to, you ought to come out this summer. He goes, I can't pay you, but – you know, you come out, we'll give you a place to, to stay and, and give you food. And so I was like, heck yeah, I'm in. And Strickland said, I'll take care of you on weekends. You know, all of our people are there, you know, so Thursday when we get out of camp till Sunday when we go back, I got you. So I was, I think I, I, I thought I was winning. I thought I was killing it. I'm like, yeah. man, you know, I'm over it. I'm like, I didn't know people were getting paid. <laughs> you, know? you were getting paid in knowledge and workout part yeah i was and then there was times we'd go down to the farm on the weekend you know there's and, I, and then i hit it that's where steve and i that first summer steve and i hit it off real good right away and steve was still young and crazier than he is now and dude, was uh, he pummeling you was he just smashing you oh dude he was so tough <laughs> it was awesome you know, his hips was, straight out. How about when he when he hobbled around for like a year, like decades? Yeah, yeah. his hips and were he, so bad, dude. It was bad, but he would take they, he would take us to you. Yeah, hey, let's go to the farm. And I think that I thought it was a great idea at first. When we get down on the farm, next thing you know, his old man would get up off. He his old man would be in there watching video. He had like the highest tech video you ever seen at that time, and he could rewind things like this, nice and like in real time. You know, like. Stuff they're doing now, he had. Yeah. And he would get up off the couch. Hey, let's go. And as soon as I walk in, he'd grab you and put you in the, and put you through a three hour drill session in the garage. You know? <laughs> and, Dude, and that's like, wild. Yeah. So that's, oh and then my God. That, so that's the connection. Play. Strickland's the connection. That's correct. Strickland don't play. He don't play. <laughs> Strickland will fist fight you. A uh, hundred times. <laughs> He's a good dude, though, right? He's the best. I love he, it. He's got a heart of gold, man. He's got is a he heart of gold. Is he still in Virginia? He is. He, uh, they run the, uh, you know, he runs a club out there. I was like, man, I was getting ready to talk about it. But I was like, that's probably illegal, you know, but he runs yeah, a club out. Well, yeah, you don't have to talk about it. Don't talk about the club yeah. because, listen, yeah. there's a club here in Ohio I want you to get out to and check out. You know, it's Burnett Trained, another Clarion guy, and, and Scotty, Scotty was a uh, – Nebraska guy and an Iowa Central guy, so we'd love to have you guys out this some summer and just check out what they got. You know, it's a great club and it's Logan Stevers Club and my nephew Ian Russell awesome. at the club, my nephew Wyatt. It's a great club, so we'd love to have you out and check the club out. And I, you know, and I, listen, I get it. We can't mention recruits' names, but I think people know because I wear the ASU gear that you know that, that first off Tempe, 
Tempe is pretty sweet. We all know that. You know that. Right? It's pretty sweet. Forks up. But, um, you know, we haven't talked about that, right? We talked, we know you got to Brian Smith. And then how long were you at NC State, by the way? Two years. Two years. How, many, how long at Mizzou? Uh, I did six years Missouri, three years Old Dominion. Back to Missouri for three. NC State for two, ASU, my 10th season. Okay, so you 10 years. So you are almost more years at ASU than all those others combined, right? Uh, yeah, I'm close. I'm close. Well, close. I was at Missouri nine years. I was at Missouri nine years. Because it was two stints. Yeah, yeah. Two stints and then two short stints, two and a three at Old Dominion and NC State, right? Correct. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, wow, you were at Missouri for a while. Hey, we wrestled you guys in the duel. Yeah. Uh, Virginia duels. I lost to Barker was at heavyweight. Oh, yeah. That was the freshman year. I wrestled Rye Stone, maybe? Does that sound right? Yeah. He had arms about this big. Yeah, he was a mutant. But I think he was an 84 like I was like a small undersized 97. So I think he beat me three to two or four to three, whatever one. You know, the, the same college match that you see hundreds of times over and over. One guy gets a takedown. Yeah. Chases the other yeah. guy on for the last minute. You know, can't score. The other guy wins 4-3. You know, you know the match. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so tell me about ASU. Tell me about Tempe, Arizona. First things first, do you live in Tempe or do you live in Chandler? Do you live in Mesa, Phoenix? Where do you live? I live in Chandler. If I had my way, I would have set up shop 100 feet from the wrestling room and never left. But uh, – when I got here, my, my kids were young, uh, and so they, my ex-wife wanted to be at the Chandler School District, so, you know, we moved out here, and it's only, it's, and again, it's, I'm out here, we're 12 miles away, you know, uh, and it's awesome, you know, it's, I love where I live, and, you know, Janae and I live in this, in this apartment complex now, which is just, it's 300 yards away from my kids, number one, and Number two, it's it's resort style living. So, you know, we have two like giant Vegas sized pools with like cabanas and outdoor sand volleyball and basketball and gyms and you know, just it, it's it's grills everywhere, outside TVs. It's, it's just it's outdoor living in Arizona. It's awesome. How far um do you have to drive? Are you on the same side of Phoenix as uh Tempe? No, it's kind of like Phoenix, Tempe, Chandler. So, so you've I got to go through Phoenix, like just traffic bad, no. I guess is my point. No, 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 no. It takes me 20 minutes to get to work. Okay. And how old are your kids now? My, well, we got the Brady Bunch. So my wife has an 18 year old. So when I say she, I'm going to say her, her daughter's 18 and okay. they're our daughter, but my son, 16. Okay. And then. 13 and my daughter's 13 and then her son's 12 so we have the Brady Bunch it's awesome oh wow wow and so there there are two there's two households but you're right next to each other 300 yards that's awesome you gotta like that yeah it's so cool and is that the painting behind you of you and your son you coaching and then your son's yeah that's awesome man that is so cool Lee I love it man he has a great head of hair thanks Jason Money, like I said my best friend that's his wife Lena Money. And she did that. That's an oil painting. That's and so awesome, dude. Man, she's an unbelievable artist. What she that got is- in, she sent that to me. That's, and it's four foot by four foot. And dude, when she said, like, I, 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 I saw new things in there, new layers in there for months. That is amazing. Yeah. That, that is you. like, Tadaki does stuff like that, but doesn't, he doesn't do quite like as detailed. His is just like, it's a different genre, different style, oh, yeah. right? Like, it's just different. I, I, mean, have one, I have the dockies. I have a copy of one. He's of got the a docies. Dave Schultz one he's done. He's got, he's got a bunch of really cool ones. His are different, though. Like, the concept of art is different. I but, think Jack Spates had that one. Spates the, has the, the Schultz the one? Big, the big four-foot-by-four-foot four Dave Schultz one. Where he's hitting that, like, arm Kimura? Yeah, I think. Is that I what it think, is? Is he look at arm come where he is, isn't he? I think he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's the original or a copy, but I know Jack had 
something hanging up in his yeah. house like that is awesome. Yeah, Tadaki does a lot of that stuff. Tadaki's done some stuff for me today. Yeah, I'm, I, I like because he comes. He's a brunette guy. He's a oh yeah, always he's at awesome. Eric's at the camps in the summer. You know, showing kendo. I see you got a. Is that a samurai? Is that a saber behind you? What is that? It is one. Uh, a, a guy made it for me out of a tree branch. Oh, that's cool. And you know, and he actually presented it to me. I, I did a camp down there, a few camps, and he presented it to me, and he was it was really cool. Tadaki does kendo at the camps for footwork. So he actually taught my nephew Ian the inside trip that he does, like an inside trip from space. Uh-huh. It's Tadaki's yeah. footwork. Because I was like, where did he learn that footwork? And then I was like, Tadaki's like, he learned it from me. I was like, okay, that makes sense. So, so but, here's, my, here's my Tadaki story. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> this will really – I'm telling stuff that I've never told before, but this will – this is how crazy my thinking was when I was young and in college. So I wrestled Ben had a first round of NCAs. Ben was at Penn, right? Or Stanford? He was at Penn. Penn, okay. And Robert so – Stanford. I think so, yes. Yeah, that's right. But in my brain, I'm like – and I already knew about Tadaki, right? I never met him, but I've heard stories. I knew about him. I knew that he was a genius, right? Everyone's called, hey, he's a wrestling genius. He's a wrestling mind. And so I've heard his name enough that I knew I wanted, I wanted time with him. So in my mind, I might even verbalize it to Coach Gats, like, you know, he said, oh, yeah, you got this guy doing it. I said, oh, yeah, I want this dude. I said, I know who this is, Coach. I said, when I, when I beat him, when I beat him, I said, the doc, he's going to work with me. <laughs> and, and I beat him, and Tadaki didn't talk to me for two years. Uh, that's something I got to Oh, man. I'm like, no, Jeffrey right. goes planned. <laughs> oh, dude, he's one of the best dudes I know, man. He's a great guy. Tadaki's a good yes. dude. We went to him, and my wife and I went to him and his wife's uh, anniversary. They're 50th. They're just great people, man. I was at St. Ignatius High School. It was a beautiful reception, and he's just He's always been so good to me, and he's just hes just awesome. I love Tadaki. And, you know, as he's getting up there in age, he's still articulate when he's – the guy can still show technique, and he's like 78, 79. That's amazing. That's you know, incredible. his family took the sport That's of wrestling. That's incredible. Dude, yeah, he can still do his aging push-ups. He said his shoulder's getting worse. But he's just always just been so gracious and awesome to me. And, and you know, his family took the sport of wrestling to Japan, and – yeah. yeah, man. I, I, I'm a fan of Tadaki. Always have been. But um, he busts my chops a lot. Though. He does bust my chops a lot. And some people are like, oh, you, you know, that guy mess. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. He's all right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna let we're gonna give the legend a pass here. And if he wants to bust my it's chops, okay. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it be. We're good. I'm respectful. I'm good. And it, it's funny too. When That's right. It, it's out of love, I believe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, dude, let's talk Sun Devils. We've been on here yeah. talking for almost an hour. We have talked zero forks, forks up, Sun Devils. Talk go. to me about Sun Devils. Fourth place finish last year in the NCAA tournament, right? You brought a trophy back yeah. to Tempe. Yep. The last team, the only team, west of the Rocky Mountains in the modern era to win an NCAA team title in 1988 with Bobby Douglas as the head coach. Yep. It can be done in Tempe, and there's no question about it. You're delusional if you don't think you can get it done in Tempe, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it can be done for sure. Uh, Zeke Jones was on that team as well. He was, he was, he was an athlete on that team that won in the 88. Uh, you know, Art Martori, who runs Sunkiss, obviously, he was highly involved in 1980, just as he is now. Uh, you know, so a, a lot of the same pieces of the puzzle – and the people that designed the, and I, I hate to use the formula or blueprint because you got to change it every year depending on, you know, how, how, how the makeup of your programs, like how, how everything looks, right, and, and what, how you need to build it. But uh, the people that were involved in winning one are, are still involved to this day. And, but now they're, you know, everyone, it, it, the last few years, and Zeke's always been very into the scientific approach of the sport, you know, and man, 
it, it's amazing the things that I've been able to learn, you know, just spending the last eight years with him, right? And, and, and it's not just what he necessarily, he's shown me, it's watching him seek out better ways of doing things, right? So you take a guy that, you know, has accomplished so much in the sport and he's not saying, hey, this is how you do it. He's saying, hey, let's go find a better way to do it. And, it, it, and that's what I think is really cool about the leadership of the program is he's going out saying, okay, I also know we have to train at a certain level, but, you know, there's a time to train speed. There's a time to train uh, endurance. There's a time to train strength, you know, so, and there's different ways to do it. And, and you know, he's getting with sports physiologists and nutritionists and, and putting all those pieces together. And it's pretty cool, man. When you look at the, there's no question, um, you guys are the last team to beat Penn State in a dual meet, I believe. Yes, sir. Um, people can say whatever they want to about it, whatever their lineup was, but it's really hard to beat Penn State in a duel. Yeah. Regardless of what lineup they're sending out, right? So just give you an example. At 197 right now. Yeah. The backup is an All-American. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody right. celebrated and partied on him. They beat him. It might have been um, the Nebraska 97. Is it Schultz? Right. Schultz partied on him, and someone's like, why is, why is Schultz celebrating? It's our backup. And I'm like, the dude's an All-American. What are you talking about? Yeah, the guy's But the good. fact that I got to say that to you, you don't – you might not get this. I don't even know who it was. It was somebody who is a, you know, who knows wrestling. You know, I forget right. who it was. Somebody who knew wrestling who was just – it was kind of a bitter, salty Penn State fan. Whatever, I get right. it. But I'm like, right. come on, man. He's party. The guy's an all American. He just beat. And that's what they got a lot of. They got a lot of that up and down the lineup. They're deep. They're Penn State. It's what Iowa was in the late 70s and 80s. Yeah. Straight up. And, and it's what it is. It's what it, it is. is. It's what it is. And and you gotta understand the year before, you know, 12 months earlier, we go in, uh, we go into state college and you know, Brandon Courtney won at 25, and we didn't win another match. You, guys and, got, you got nine to one? Yes. And you flipped that and won that in the next season? Correct. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's – it was – it was in, – in, it, it was pretty amazing how – we kind of knew we weren't prepared going in there, you know, and the guys felt it. And, man, that, that – that, that match when we take, took that beat and gave it, you know, it changed us, right? It changed us. And the team got more focused. Everything, it, everything got better from that day, you know, and we went out and, and sought better ways to do things and brought more people in to get involved in where are we going wrong? You know, and, and asking questions and, and that, and that's really what I thought was, was amazing because coming into the next season when we made the plan, you know, it was we couldn't actually be peaking for Penn State because we two weeks later we had Vegas, which is basically you know a huge ranking tournament, right? So, yeah, they uh, sports physiologists and, and our staff and strength conditioning coaches we got together and they basically said, hey, X amount of days out, you need to do this kind of training, and you know, and then right after Penn State, you get to go back into this kind of training for three days, and then we're back into the you know, peaking training, you know, and, and, you know, all it's basically all of our speed training to develop our power and stuff. And so sure enough, man, it was, uh, it was unbelievable to watch the predictions to the results. Right. Uh, and, and again, we had to use our wrestling knowledge to understand what each kind of training was because the sports physiologist didn't know anything about wrestling, but they said, you train this, this, and this. And now we had to, use the knowledge they were giving us and develop wrestling plans for it, you know, and it was really cool. It was really cool to watch it, watch it, not only watch it work, but is to watch, you know, our, our strength conditioning close coaches world-class and to watch everyone make changes in the program from the wrestling to the conditioning, to the strength part of it, uh, to the nutrition part of all of it. And, and that short period of time was, uh, was pretty, pretty cool to be part of. The barbarian hour is in overtime. Are you are you okay with that? I'm always good with that. Well, it's listen, most of my matches. 
I, I, I was disrespectful of my man, Anthony Schmalty B. Mobbins time, Anthony Ashnault. And I don't ever want to do that again. And I normally have Jared Offer on keeping me on a leash because I can talk. I know Lee Pritz can talk. We can talk. So sometimes yeah, time gets away from and I can see I can see your wife moving around there in the background. She she's in and out a little bit there, and I don't want to be a thief of time because uh, I can tend to be that, and I want to be more respectful of people's time. So she's awesome. we're good. She we're did. good for barbarian hour. A little bit of overtime, right? Let's go. Okay, so you guys knock off Penn State. That's obviously huge. They're the standard, right? Do you look yes. at it like we're chasing Penn State or we're doing us? What, what, how do you guys look at that? When you talk to Zeke, you sit down with the staff, rank the tank, Molinero, uh, the Golden Bear, Coach Thompson, right? When you guys sit down as a staff, and then obviously if Mark Perry, you know, he's available, oh, yeah. he's, you've got all these minds that you can bounce stuff off of. Is it we're chasing yeah. Iowa and Penn State, or is it we're doing us and we're going to do what we do? It's all of it. You know, it's all of it. And it, it's – that it's really cool about our staff is, you know, we all have different backgrounds and the, so there's a lot with all the different backgrounds, there's a lot of crossover and similarities. And there's some things that are just out of our realm that, that you maybe Frank brings something to the table that the rest of us don't have. And each coach has something that the rest of us don't have, you know, and, and it's really cool to, to be able to present why this needs to be for, you know, Mark Perry comes in with a whole another in, you know, why this needs to be implemented and how it's going to be implemented and when it's going to be implemented. And so there's a little bit of, we're doing us and there's a little bit of, you know, I I'd say it's more about us than it is chasing the others, but at the end of the day, you're doing you to chase them. Right. I mean, I mean, you got to keep up, got to keep up, right. Like keep up. Yeah, I mean, you guys are in the process. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is there a new facility on the horizon? There is. They're okay. doing a whole new Olympic village. It's not just for us. It's, it's. I mean, they just built five or six new fields. That we have a couple grass fields. We have a couple turf fields that they just built for, you know, soccer, lacrosse. Uh, you know, an athlete's like that. pavilion, something like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, like an Olympic <laughs> field. They just built all new sand volleyball courts. Gotcha. They're moving tennis over. They're going to, you know, all the Olympic sports, we're getting a new facility, gymnastics. It, it's there in November, November of 2022, our new 50, just like it's basically going to be like Ohio State's kind, okay. you know, sort of that 5,500 seed arena is opening up for, for wrestling, hockey, and volleyball. So, yeah, I mean, wait, things are wait, growing. Wait, wait, wait. You're in the desert. You just said the H word. Yeah, you guys right. have hockey. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god! How long have you guys had hockey? So it was a club sport. Uh, and hold on, got, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not you. You're not. You're. You. You see where I? Yes. It's 120 yes. degrees there in the summer, my guy. Come on. I know it's beautiful. Think about that. You get to go in the, and come out there and wearing flip flops and shorts. You get to go from the ice rink to the pool. So, hey, I'm sorry. I, years, I don't mean this. I'm sorry. <laughs> didn't the pro team? Didn't the pro team leave? No, actually, the Coyotes just signed. I, I believe it's a three year contract to use while they're getting theirs redid. They're using ours. That starts in November for the next three years. I, for some reason, I thought that they – something about their their lease was not renewed. That's what it was, right? Is that maybe, it? Maybe. Yeah, that could be. Maybe I think that's, that's what it was. I, which, whatever. I mean, you just, I see so much news because I teach a current issues class. And it's like right. part of my job, right? And I'm like, I just I see so much information, right? Then you can – I have a hard time placing a lot of the dates, though, because things – you know, time flies, right? You know, you, know, you have kids. Nonstop. You have kids. Nonstop. Nonstop, right? But, okay, tell me about this new facility at Arizona State. Man, it's state-of-the-art. Uh, it's going to be like 5,500 seats. It's, it's an ice rink, right? And actually, they have – there's going to be that with, with fans, and then there's a, another ice rink that's butted up right next to it, more like just a practice ice rink um, that they'll have events in. But, yeah, they're building two new ice rinks, and 
they'll they'll have the you know the luxury boxes, sky boxes, and all that stuff, you know. Uh, but it's state of the art, fifty five hundred seat arena for basically three sports. Well, the mat. Will you do what Ohio State does and elevate the mat? And then you'll be on top of the ice, but because we have our um, our OAC, which is what Jared, my co-host, normally he he runs OAC, which is the nonprofit here in Ohio, Ohio Athletic Community, and the the state championships for the youth, the girls, and the middle school is now it's it's been for the last over decade in Youngstown, for the Youngstown yeah. Phantoms. It's 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 always on the ice. I guess is my point. Yeah, and it's not hard to navigate. It's easy to deal with, and they've got these boards that fit together like a you know, puzzle pieces, and you're on the ice. Will you guys yeah. be on the ice? Uh, I, I imagine we have to be, right? Well, it's the same season. It's the same season. Yeah, same season. So we, yeah. we have to be. So I don't know uh, how I mean, our facilities people are top notch, so I'm not worried. They, they'll, yeah. they'll have I mean, it. it won't be an issue. I can, I can already tell you it won't be an issue because I'm guessing you're going to do what Ohio State does and do the stage. I, I'm, I'm guessing that too. Will it be five mats, do you think? Will the facility be five mats like Ohio State's? We're not going to be connected like they are. Okay, okay. you'll have a whole other even separate. But your we're, competition we're, arena will be on that, that rink where the rink is. Yeah. But your facility right. – okay, all right. Because there's, there's like a T, I think, like an owl or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've, been, I, I've been in there. Um, we're we're going to have a standalone room. Um, and I believe it's going to be – I believe again, they change a few times, but I believe it's going to be somewhere around six mats. Oh uh, what are you guys now? Five, four? We, we have, we, it's been four mats, but we okay. ripped up. It was, it was three mats long and then we had space for another mat, but we rolled that mat up and filled that with weight cardio. and bikes. Yeah. Cardio. Yeah. We have yeah. treadmills and neck machines and we have this huge monkey bars and, you know, just, 10, 15 aerodynes and stuff like that. So you guys were the first ones that actually did what Nittany Lion Wrestling Club is kind of doing now with, with Sunkist, right? Uh, I Hawkeye, believe, okay, so Hawkeye Wrestling yeah. Club. But, like, you guys yes. followed that model, right? And then you went out and you found – you got a donor. You got the donor, right? You got yep. the largest private landowner in the state of Arizona. The Correct. owner of the Sunkist uh, Orchards and yeah, Art Martori. Art Martori is Art a ASU grad, by the way. He is. He is. Okay. He is. Did he wrestle? And I believe he won it. He did. I believe he won a conference title. I'm not sure what conference they were then, but I believe he won a conference title. Okay. Uh, as an athlete. Okay. How old is Art? Uh, early seventies. Early seventies. Okay. So he's all you know. He's obviously very involved in it. And, you know, Sunkiss Kids, and you've brought in some absolute, some of the best, right? And you want to keep your athletes around in that post, offering the postgraduate, I think, is the key thing right now. When you guys go and recruit against Michigan, Penn State, Iowa, Ohio State, you know, uh, yeah, Penn all, State, of all of them, right? All of them. You guys offer that component. You're one of the original, essentially, RTCs. Is that correct? For sure. I mean – when you start looking at it, if that's really what a kid wants, right? If that's what a student athlete wants is they want to, they, they don't want a, a four or five year program. They want the eight to 10 year program, maybe 12, you know, whatever it is, right. It's, we can provide that. And, and you got to start looking at how many programs, you know, are the 79 programs out there, how can actually provide that? And, you know, so, so I think it puts you in, it, it puts you in contention to be in the fight with the, with the, with the elite level guys that, that want to wrestle on the international level, because they know that there's, you know, you can't do that everywhere. You can't do that everywhere. You know? So yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's the, it's the human condition, limited resources. Yes. Your, your, your human condition is a top 10 human condition. It's not a, what Eastern Michigan was, right? Or it, some of the Mac schools are dealing with or Southern Conference schools. You're, dude, you're dealing was, with a just, massive budget. You're in the, you know, the Pac-12. And I mean, it's, it is, it's what it is though. Yeah. Zeb, I just was telling this to Eric uh, Thompson this morning. I was laughing. I go, dude, I didn't know. Like when I was at Eastern Michigan, you know, I said, it's not, not every, not every program is the same. I said, when I was Eastern, 
I didn't realize I wasn't playing on the same playing field. You know, I didn't realize that people traveled to university nationals a day and a half before with a masseuse and a nutritionist and, and had, you know, training partners and slept in hotels. I was like, I thought everybody woke up at 2.30 in the morning and jumped in the car with their buddies and made it to weigh-ins on time six hours away. <laughs> yeah. How would you know any better? You wouldn't know any better. Yeah. You'd said, visit the other places. You wouldn't know that. Yeah. Crazy. I said, I didn't, yeah. I, I, I didn't know that they weren't taking shots of Diet Mountain Dew to get juiced up because they've been cramped up in a car for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Talk about your senior level athletes right now. Who is on the roster at Sunkist? Who is currently living and or training in and around Tempe, Arizona? Well, we're kind of in a transition, right? Because you got Zahid, obviously Zahid, uh, who's who, you know, who's who's a beast. You got Josh Shields, who's a three-time All-American here. Uh, Josh Kramer, uh, he, he's still on board. He won, he was in the finals of the US Open uh last year. So we got, you know, on the men's side and, you know, we got some guys getting ready to graduate, right? We, a, 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 after the last Olympic trials, you know, some of the guys left and went to the work field and they said, all right, it's time. And so they moved on and now we're in transition. We got some guys getting ready to graduate, you know, like you got an Anthony Valencia who's going to be training. So he's going to slide in. You got a guy like Cordell Northfleet. If he, gets another year he'll be with us if not he'll slide in you know so you have some guys like that uh coming in and, and and you know chasing their goals and then you know in a year after that you got a guy like brandon courtney who's going to be 57 kilo that you know is a great freestyler as well and you know so we got a bunch of homegrown guys and then on the female side you know we have a whole crew coming right now you know with you got Caitlin Miracle in there. You know, you got Dom Parrish in there. You got Forrest Molinar. You got Helen Morales. Uh, you got uh, Maya Nelson, who's out on injury right now, but she'll be, you know, and, heck, all, all those girls got medal. Well, you got, what, three medals at the World Championships this year, and Maya wrestled for a bronze. Okay. You know, so. So, so not to cut you off but I know you can't mention this because these people are not, they're, they're still technically high school recruits, but huge news. And huge. this is me saying it, not you coach Pritz. Yeah. The blades, the blade sisters are going to be in Tempe. They're going to train at Sunkist. Yeah. That is like a cataclysmic shift. That's a massive event because I think they're the future of women's wrestling in the United States of America. That's my opinion. I know you're not going to necessarily weigh in it, but, but I, I feel like that needs to be mentioned. That's an important thing. Yeah. And I know you probably, you can't comment. I'm not trying to lead you down that road. We don't want the NCA to ding you guys for a whatever, you know? No, and that's fine. We, we don't actually have women's wrestling or as, a, exactly. as a college sport. So, yes. and, and I know they signed some type of contract. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they are some kissed athletes. And I know they will be attending Arizona state uh, university uh, in, 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 you know, getting their degree from ASU. Dude, they're really good. <laughs> they're awesome. They're and really they're great good. People. Yeah, and great people too. You know, I they're mean, they're really good. They're really, really, really good. I think they can like, and and I know that Adeline Gray and Helen have really changed the sport of women's wrestling in the United States of America. I, you know, to not mention those two, it's a crime, right? And there's ladies who care sure. for them, right? Who who did what they? Clarissa Chun, obviously. I mean, we had we've had some just excellent uh, with Christy Morano. That would be one another one that comes oh, to yeah. mind. You know, you got to mention the pioneers, but I think the blades, the blade sisters are are. I think that they're. I think they would be successful athletes at whatever they did. If they wanted to be high jumpers, if they wanted to be basketball, if they wanted to be track, if they want what whatever it is, volleyball. I think the blade sisters are like athletes that can do anything, in my opinion. Yeah, they're, I think they're highly great. of them. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I do too, and I think we're uh, we're excited to get them out here. And you know, obviously they've been well coached. Uh, you know, with the programs they've been around, and we're just we're really excited to get them out here. And dude, we have a we have a group of girls that are just they're just winners, man. They're a bunch of assassins. It's awesome. Yeah, you guys, you're gonna win. 
the world medal and the Olympic medal uh, case is going to get full and Tempe pretty quick <laughs> with Sunkist, in my opinion. How often is Art Martori in your guys'? Does he stay away or does he come around a lot? No, he's. I halfway joke him when he shows up. And his daughter Kim Martori is highly involved too, right? Like she's she's a rock star too. So usually when I see those two come up, I'm, I I joke him a little bit. I'm like, "You guys hiring someone today or firing someone?" You know. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> <laughs> they they'll they, you know they'll mess with me a little bit man maybe today's your day pritz i'm like oh, oh man <laughs> i'm going back over here on the mat <laughs> so they're you know they'll, they'll be around when things when they're when they need to be around is what it sounds like yeah they they're they're you know more hands off i mean they're highly involved in the sport of wrestling right it's not just asu it's they're 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 involved in the sport of wrestling uh, on the world stage you know they're highly involved you know Art Martori calls NCAA titles. He calls them baby NCAA titles. He, he tells people they're cute. Like when Zahid won his first one, he said, oh, that's cute, that little baby NCAA title. You know, like that, if that doesn't put you back in perspective, nothing will. You're like, man, I just won an NCAA title. I'm feeling pretty good. And he's calling it a baby title, you know, and downplaying it, you know, because he he's really focused on Olympic gold medals and, you know, world gold medals but really olympic gold medals he's got high expectations the highest but but again it's you know think about he he all the people that wrestled for sun kiss right zeke was sun kiss kale sanderson was sun kiss john smith was sun kiss sammy henson sun kiss you know uh kendall cross was sun kiss you know you just go on and on with the list and you know jordan burrow's been sun kiss forever you know yeah Kyle snyder started out sun kiss you know just on and off it's crazy. But so here's my, my kind of ret to wrap up on, you know, yeah. we talked about the PAC 12 at all. Right. And, and yeah. I, I think that the thing that saved the PAC 12 yeah. and you guys dropped in like, was it nine or 10? When was it? I forget. Yeah. I don't know. the Nine or 10. Let's just, let's say nine or 10, maybe eight. Let's whatever. call it that. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Nine or 10, you guys dropped. Obviously, someone steps in. We know who steps in and, and make sure that the sport doesn't leave Tempe, Arizona, right? Yep. And if you guys drop the Pac-12, all those schools are done. Because we already know that, the, you know, and I've always talked about it, wrestling in the West at the college level, Division One, it's in trouble, right? And, and we don't want it to be in trouble. And now with a renewed – what you guys are doing with your new facility and what Oregon state's putting into the sport and Stanford being able to be saved. Bakersfield is, you know, they they've beaten being dropped multiple times. Right. I mean, every other year it feels like what happened to Fresno state, obviously a setback. Um, Cal Baptist is not, they're not going to be in there. Are they a big 12? Will they be big 12? They're big 12. I believe. They're, yeah. They're big 12. Right. So you guys brought little rock in to fill the void of, of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the other teams that have left, you know, and the, the conference had, you know, Fullerton, it had, geez, yeah. we, we went through it, all the teams that have dropped. It, it, it's it's mind-numbing, right? Right. In the state of California that have dropped. Um, and, you know, just obviously Washington, Washington State don't have it. Arizona doesn't have it. You know, like most of the Pac-12 original members don't have it. But yeah, only you guys, schools. you guys saving saved the college sport of wrestling division one in in the west there's no question about it if you guys don't do that there's no the, the wrestling stops in colorado stops in wyoming that's where it is that's where division one wrestling stops if you guys didn't save it uh, you know and it, before my time but i agree i mean there's no, there's no question there's no question and you know you guys did it you have the blueprint you've got the blueprint to win the only program to do it in the modern era west of the rockies <laughs> right i mean you know, and then and then what what Stanford was able to do, and then the season Stanford had, that's huge, right? But that huge. conference, talk about that conference a little bit. It's not a gimme. That conference no. isn't a gimme. You gotta oh, no. you gotta show up at that conference, and you gotta you better be ready to go, because those yeah, guys are every, gonna smack you in the mouth. Every the conference tournament is so small, right? There's every match counts. Like yeah. literally every match counts, and. I remember we won it one year, and uh, our guy, Nico Villarreal, 141, 
wasn't having a great year, didn't have a great career, you know, and it was struggling, right? And man, he went out in that Concy semis, right? Concy small tournament anyway. Concy semis then ended up pinning the Bakersfield kid who beat him up last time and pinned him. And he came off the mat and I told him, I said, Hey, that was five points. I said, Tony, that was five points. That just won the conference tournament for us. And we ended up winning by four and a half points. No way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. So it was like, it was like that match, you know, that match, or we ended up winning by like one match, something crazy, but that match. And again, you could go through and point out a couple yeah, other matches. A bunch of different matches, but, but just but for example, that match, though, that guy, the guy who had a terrible year, yeah, ends up winning the conference for you essentially by pulling through. Yeah, he he and he didn't even qualify, but he put it punched in the third and fourth, gave us a few more points. But that particular match with the advancement and the pin points yeah. was and the placement points that that was five points. And I was like, I was like, you know, that was huge, you know. And and so you look at everyone and but the, the emergence of the conference, right? Rob Cole comes into Stanford and we all know he's a hustle. He's gonna go, he's gonna do great things. And so that's awesome. John Cerritos is over at Cal Poly. They're killing it right now. You know, they're top 20. I don't know what they're ranked right now, but I think I seen something the other day, like up as high as 14. You know, so they have like five, six, seven guys ranked. Did you, you know, coach with Cerritos at ODU? I coached him. I coached him at Missouri. At Mizzou? Yep. So I was around him and he went to Great Bridge. Because he, he's a Great he, Bridge guy. That's the connection, right? Yep. Yeah. And then came to Missouri. And uh, ended up leaving after his maybe his third year. And uh, Did he go to Chattanooga of, or ODU, I forget. He went to Chattanooga with Brands, okay. with Terry. And then, uh, and he was in a tough spot with us too because he, you know, Tyron Woodley was there at sixty-five, and he was yeah. a sixty-five pounder, and you know they had it was a war. I mean, we, we were deep. It was good. I mean, so he went there, and then we ended up coaching together at ODU. Yeah, ODU. So, yeah. That's where I remember him from. Yeah, so him and I are real close and great relationship, and he's doing a great job out there. You know, I'm really excited for him and what they're doing. And, you know, and then, uh, you know, I mean, Luke, Luke, Luke Smith's over at, at Bakersfield, and they're working their tails off to uh, get it done. They're in a tough situation, right? They're in a tough yeah. situation. And they get a lot done with very little. You know, they always have a couple, you know, and they're going to punch you in the face. I can promise you that team will punch you in the face. They – that. They take pride in that. It's like, oh, we're going to wrestle Bakersfield. Get ready to get punched in the face. Yeah. You know, and then uh, Pendleton, Pendleton and his crews over there at Oregon State. And, uh, you know, I know they're going to make an impact. You know, they already are, right? They already are. They went out and got some transfers and they're out hustling and, you know, they're, they're going to, they're, they're going to be a good program too. So yeah, I like where our conference is headed. And you know? Little Rock is kind of the outlier because they're geographically oh. not in the con. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're an affiliate. Not, and what are they, three years in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they're three Startup. years in. Have you, been, have you been to one of their home duels? Or have I haven't. I it? saw they got the Octagon. They got the Octagon. Virginia Tech's got the Octagon. Yeah. One other team, I think. Yeah, so they got that the I love Octagon. That I watched. I pay attention to. They got Jason Bryant on the mic, right? For He does all their home events. That's cool. And it is. So they get a pretty good crowd in there. And uh, they hype it up pretty good. And, and I know they've been hitting the road hard. They have, they have great facilities and they've been hitting the road. Hard. They've been bringing in a good, good recruiting class. Yeah. You know, and they got a standalone facility, don't they? Oh yeah. It's yeah. awesome. So it's pretty nice. It's really nice. Yeah. They're so doing it. It's, I, I, I love the direction that our conference is headed. I really wish like, I, I understand. I know the whole thing with Cal Baptist, why they couldn't come in. But I really wished – I think it would have really helped Fresno State. I think it, you know, if it could have grown it to eight teams, I, I think that that would have been obviously yeah. ideal. You know, it's an eight-man eight, eight man bracket instead of a six, right? Oh, yeah. Because that, that affects things too because it's not, a, it's not a blind draw. So they still – one and two get buys. So you get three, six, and four, five wrestling each other that first round. So now you start talking bonus points right there and that's that's always a scary round yeah yeah <laughs> this it, is when wild. it comes down to the title that's a scary round 
Yeah, if you don't it, have it a good time, crazy. if you don't have a bunch of Nico Villarreal Al's who are gonna win in the, pan in that Conti semi, you could be in trouble. Big time. The, Big time. The, the tournament's usually not won until the finals. Yeah, I remember that because I obviously I was I was into Oregon State there for a while, and there was a couple thing, a couple of those ones that came down to the the finals. I remember, and I was like, I watched it one year, and I was like, wow, this it's super competitive. It's so yeah, wild. It doesn't have as many teams, but it's it's super competitive. And I, I you know, I always appreciated that about the pack. But I really wish we could get more of those those you know the traditional members, Washington, Washington State, you know, Oregon to add back. Obviously, Oregon's got more money than they want to do with, so they just buy football uniforms. Yeah. And obviously, you know, USC, UCLA, um, Cal, right? Like we we know that the, those those institutions have it. But you know, <sighs> that's a different funny. story, and that's all. <laughs> Well, another podcast. Another three yeah, the days barbarian the hour will become the barbarian southern hour. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, Lee Pritz, awesome. you got anything else for me? Any, anything before we head off that I didn't hit, touch on? Um, I appreciate everything you do, man. You get so excited, and that's what I love about doing stuff with you. Is you get so excited about the sport, and you, uh, you're actually, uh, you're actually a psychopath about the sport, and I love that. You know, like you're so driven by it. <laughs> you are. You're so driven by it, and uh, it gets me excited. Every time I, I talk to you, I get excited about the sport, and uh, I love rapping with you, man. I appreciate it, man. I wish that you know what though. I'm I'm a different. I don't. I'm not a newsbreaker. I'm not a somebody wanted to announce their college decision to me, and I was like, I just don't do that, man. <laughs> yeah. And it was like yeah. a, a big recruit, and I was like, not to insult them, I was just like, you need flow wrestling, or you need. Yeah. Or you, it's just not me you know what i mean i like this yeah i like this i like the the relationship end of it and you know as we've alluded to multiple times that's a relationship sport it's a relationship everything yeah. lee pritz has done has been based on and predicated off of relationships you know, you're gonna head yeah. to garden city because that's where brian smith says you're gonna head if he's calling shots from out in ithaca you're heading over there right i mean <laughs> It's just crazy, and then you know, there's the lean, and then the gads, and it's just Rob Eider, and all these just different things, and just even Saritas bringing Saritas up. I remember being in a hotel room with you guys in 2007 in Detroit, and the water, the ice had melted in the container. Container. We were in somebody's hotel room. It was the Josh Moore, Anderson, and, and and Steve or uh, Martin. Steve Martin, isn't it? Yeah. Was drinking the water <laughs> out of the the thawed water out of the ice container. <laughs> I, I don't know. My I don't even got, know if you were coaching with them, but okay. later than your guys might have been out or something, and you were hanging out with him, Saritas, and you, and it was the Friday night, and I don't know if you guys had all of America. Right. Dude, he was tri- Do you know how disgusting that container is? I was going to say, I don't know who taught him that either. I taught him or he taught me. But <laughs> it's, hey, have you ever tried it? It's great water. It's so cold. It's out so of a hotel ice bucket. Yeah. It's good it's for the immune lunatics. system. Lunatics. Oh, I remember hey. seeing you and Askren in Fargo, too. It, like oh, yeah. we we're out we were driving in like a ba- a van and we were out you know we were out like at a uh, honky tonk bar or something uh, yeah <sighs> oh yeah those guys are great too Dude, you're crazy. always having fun though i love that you're always you know, upbeat having fun um always have yeah, a hat a on oh yeah, yeah. Living, a, living a dream dude i know hey do you still wrestle do you wrestle much uh i don't i don't wrestle a lot you know, I'll roll around, you know, I roll around whenever they need it. I'm rolling around, you know, yet yesterday or some, you know, a guy, there was miscommunication on the individual. So I was like, I'm in, you know, I just jumped in and did it. And I roll around with Kayla Miracle a lot or my, you know, I roll around the girls a little more than, uh, than the college guys, but I'll roll around with them when they need it, you know, or warming them up, you know, I can do that, but I'm shoot almost 48 years old. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can wrestle them here and there. The problem is I, I can't give them the proper look, right? Yeah. I can be, because you I don't can move. Be, you don't move like a college no. guy. No, I can and be. You got to cheat. Especially. You got to get on top of them and hammer them. 
<laughs> it's only yeah, shot. Let right? them get on your leg and sit on their head. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's tough. <laughs> but it's, it's all, a- yeah, you can do that stuff. And, but it's not, and you're doing stuff that's not, I mean, you can be a body form, but it's not even, you're not giving them the right feel. You know what I mean? And, and so, yeah, I, I'll, I'll roll with them and drill with them and spar with them. But yeah, the, the, the hard wrestling days, the live wrestling days, those are, you know, those are probably gone. Was that tough? Was that tough to accept that? Um, not really. Cause I'm still on the mat enough to where, you know, I don't need, I, I mean, my ego died a long time ago. You know what I mean? As far as, yeah, I, I, I listen, listen, I could sit down and write a flipping book of all the stuff you say. Cause it's like, it's always usually perfectly placed and it's from, you probably learned it from the other 700 people that you've had relationships with. It's always perfectly timed and you take it and you adapt it to your way. And I, my ego died a long time ago. A lot of people wouldn't say that right now, Lee Pritch, you know that, right? Oh yeah. And that's a lot yeah. of their problems. You know that too. That's huge. Name, that's, but man, it's, there's a lot of that still, but that I have none. I, I, it's, you know, it's about the guys and the girls and the people I coach and, and, you know, I'm just here, like whatever they need. That's what I said, you know, at the beginning, you're, what's my title? I said, I don't know. Call me the water boy. I don't, I don't care. You know, as long as I'm able to do what I love to do. I love it. Dude, keep doing what you love. I love it. I got to get out to camps or something or out for a dual meet. Or oh, something. Keep, I'm coming. I'm running. coming. I'm coming to Ohio state tournament. It looks like. Okay. That doesn't do me any good. It doesn't, that doesn't teleport me to Tempe, but, um, uh, my buddy Nemeth, Nick Nemeth, lives in Phoenix. Yeah. So, um, come on, man. Yeah, you I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna hit it out there sometime. Probably be like a a cannonball run. I'll be out quick and fast. But I'll hit you guys up for a day if I can, definitely, and make something happen because it's all right there and it's all within like 20 minutes drive. So I, I'll Me. I'm a fool if I don't. But Lee Me Pritz, I love it. I love the invite. I love everything, Lee Pritz. Thank you for coming on the Barbarian Hour. Go out and check out everything. Go out and buy the snazzy shirt at www.barbarianapparel.com. Lee Pritz, stick around. Thank you for the time tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you, Zed Miller.